and welcome everybody to today's exciting episode. Oh, exciting. It's an exciting one. Yep. Um, now, I'm going to start off with a little story about myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not being vain. <laughs> <laughs> Go for but it. But anyway, right. So, February this year, late February, I was sat on the sofa watching telly and my phone lit up. It was a Facebook notification. I don't often get Facebook notifications because I don't really use Facebook that much. Yeah. And as I clicked on the notification, it said, your account has been suspended. Oh, right. I thought, well, what's all this about? So I tried opening it up, and it said, yes, your account has been suspended uh, for, on terms of uh, uh, terrorism and dangerous persons. <laughs> right. Would you like to contest this? And I was like, well, yeah. Yeah. I haven't even used Facebook this week. Why have they suddenly decided to suspend my account? Well, so, I've, I've known you for a few years, and I would say you're definitely not under the category of terrorists. So, that's... so yeah, I, I, I contested it. I said, yes, I would, I would like my account back, please. And they said it might take up to 24 hours, which it pretty much did. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, I was able to get back onto Facebook, changed my password, and then I saw what had actually happened. You see, I was a victim of an online hack mm, attack. Not good. Not nice. You really do feel like your personal space has been invaded. You've been violated. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's horrible. All my personal information had gone. They'd reset my birth date to, I think, the 1st of February 20, uh, 2001. Oh, Okay. Well, so, made you younger. Yeah, I was younger. I was 20 <laughs> years younger. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> but they, they, they deleted my profile picture mm -hmm. and uploaded, and I'm not joking, 700 photos pro-ISIS, Islamic Oof. State. That's a lot. A lot of photos. Mm. And then that's not even an overestimation. There was 700. They uploaded the same 100 photos seven times over. Ugh, that's so frustrating. Which is why Facebook suspended me. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I deleted all the photos. Yeah. Reset my profile picture. Uh, noticed that all my personal information had gone, but I didn't realise that they'd also set any posts that I make to absolute public, not just my friends, not, you know, it, it, there was mm. no limit on who could see my posts. Right, yeah. Didn't realise that, so I put out a little post moaning, you know, saying, oh, look, I've been hacked, um, sorry if you saw the pictures, uh, you know, ISIS, I don't support ISIS, but, you know, they've hacked me, but I, I've now got my account back. Within minutes, someone who I didn't know, called, I think they were called Patient Jane or something like that, commented, on my post, going, mm. oh, that's so horrible. It's horrible when you get fat, hacked. I know exactly how you feel. Um, here's a link to a guy who can sort out your account. Was I following that link? No. No, <laughs> no I wasn't. I blocked this patient, Jane, or whatever her name was. Blocked her completely. Then realised what had happened. My posts were public. So mm -hmm. I went and put them back to fr private or friends only or you know, that sort of thing. And thought... Brilliant, right, okay, at least I've got my account back. I can't change my date of birth because apparently you can only do that so many times a year. <laughs> All right, that's news to me. <laughs> so, um, but at, at least, you know, I'll put my profile picture back up on there and, and I thought, well, don't worry about the, the rest of the basic information. I can, do, I can do that at a later date. It doesn't really matter. I don't use Facebook that much anyway. Mm -hmm. Within three hours, I was hacked again. Again, again, the same my, yeah. I, within three hours, my phone note lit up notification: your account's been suspended. Ugh. More photos have been uploaded, even oh. though I changed my password. Yeah. Within three hours, they'd got back in. It's, I don't understand how they managed to do that. Honestly, I don't know either. I honestly, don't. Um, mm. But th anyway, th that, that, so I went through the same process again. Yeah. Get my account up and running. This time, made sure that my posts were set to private, friends only, before mm -hmm. I did anything else. Reset my profile picture again. Deleted all the jihadi pictures again. Mm -hmm. One of which had been put as my profile picture. Oof, that's horrible. Yeah, horrible. Um, and I thought, right, this time I won't say nothing. Mm -hmm. I'll just you know, change my password yet again. And... 
I was all right. That day, nothing else happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't put any posts out, didn't complain about it or anything like that. I thought I'd just, I'd just quietly reinstate my account and leave it. I'd just, you know, go on Facebook once a month like I normally do. Yep. Next day, Facebook <laughs> notification. <laughs> Locked again. You're, no, yeah. your advert has been declined. Would you like to know what the reason? I'm like, I haven't put an advert out. Right. Who, okay. who is trying to put an advert out on my account and obviously make me pay for the advert? Right. So at this point, I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I am done. Yeah, you would be. That's third strike, you know? So I put my account up for permanent deletion. Yeah. And that happened on, I think, the 25th of March this year. So I now no longer have Facebook. 16 years I had a Facebook account. Mm. And because of some ISIS hacker. Yeah. And I want to really, really want to use some straw, strong four-letter words here, but I'm going to keep it PG. I mean, you can. You can I, just beep it out. <laughs> I, I can, but that's extra effort. Isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, I, so 16 years of Facebook has just been erased. Yeah, that's uh, really annoying. I've, there were contacts on there that I only had through Facebook. Mm -hmm. Don't have phone numbers for them. Lost. Gone, yeah. mate. And that, that's what hits me the hardest, really, I think. Yeah, and years of connections and friendships, it's, it's gone. And you know me, Josh. Over the next couple of days, I wasn't very happy about this. Yeah, you were fuming. And I kind of wanted to get revenge. Mm -hmm. I did come to you one day and say, right, my next podcast, I'm going to debunk Islam. Mm. And what did you say to me? Uh, I think it's a bad idea and you need to, <laughs> need to calm <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did. I, I let it lie. I've let it lie for you know quite a few weeks now. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I can't debunk Islam. No, no. Because for one thing, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And another thing is there are millions of people over the world that are Islamic. Yeah. You know, they're perfectly decent people. Yeah. They're not doing any harm to anyone. Mm -hmm. I can't just go and, you know, all attack on their religion just because yeah. of a few, few... Horrible people. Yeah. Bad apples in the Bad bunch. Bad apples, yeah, 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 exactly. And it's, it's that same phrase, that old age-old phrase, a few bad apples spoil it for everyone, don't they? Yes, you know? yeah, it's true. Uh, so I've, I calmed down and I thought about it constructively. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, they they... This ISIS lot, this Islamic state, they're trying to enforce like Sharia law and all this sort of thing everywhere, all over the globe. They want to convert everyone to Islam. Well, who's to say they're right? Mm. But then who's to say that Christians are right? Yeah. Who's to say that Buddhists are right? No one can prove that the other one is wrong. Yeah, it's true. Because it's impossible, isn't it? Just, so I thought, well, let's... Look at this in a constructive way for this podcast, and that's what I'm attempting to do today because I'm not the only person who has sort of had this kind of feeling, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's about sort of double standards, and you know, it's like we, here in the UK, we have people known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, they go around door to door, handing out leaflets, going, "Come and join our religion." You know, mm -hmm. it's just a branch of Christianity. Yeah, um, but one of the things that I don't like about them is the fact that they're, "Oh, come and join us. This is our beliefs. Come and believe it. Believe mm -hmm. it." I have beliefs. I am a religious person. I don't consign to an organized religion, a single one. Mm -hmm. I have my beliefs. I rarely share them. Yeah, yeah. I don't try and force them on other people. I certainly don't expect other people to believe what I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's annoying when people do that. Yeah. I can give you a quick example, a very quick example Go for it. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, something yeah. similar where I know exactly what you feel, how you're feeling. Is when um, me and Chloe first got together and she was at university, I went to drop her off at work one Saturday morning. And there was roadworks all the way along through uh, the city of Norwich. Right. And there was a church at the other end. Now, the same route that I always used to drop her off at work, 
I got stopped by a policeman and said, oh, you have to go the long way round. There's diversion signs, but it's about an extra 15 minutes to get back to this street. And I'm not even kidding you, mate. The street was 20 seconds. Right, so yeah, just a couple hundred yards. Down, like, yeah. And I said, but that car in front of me was allowed to go down there. And he said, oh, but they're going to church. They're religious. So it was almost like, oh, it's one rule for one. But, but one not for the other. other. Yeah. So I can't go down there because I'm not religious. Because well, so, you're not going to church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like double standard. So I do get what you mean where it's like, who's right, who's wrong? Why is this person or this religion allowed to do certain things? So It's just a small kind of example of what you're, you're yeah. saying about the feeling of... Now, and and this, this has been like documented in many different ways. I'll give you another example, right? Because th this is really getting into sort of the meat and bones of the of the podcast. In two thousand and five, mm -hmm. the Kansas State Board of Education wanted to change the curriculum. The, obviously, the United States, the, the, their local curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted to to include. Uh, they wanted to change the curriculum all about evolution, right, and how it's taught. And they proposed that they wanted to include intelligent. Design, okay, into scientific evolution. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you know, obviously, trying to educate children on the fact that the Earth was created by a higher power. Mm. Um, and this was done. They said to have an equal weight amongst teachings alongside Darwin's theory of er evolution. Right. Which uh, is taught in science classes. Yeah. So Now, religion is taught in religious classes. We had religious education when I was yeah. at school. You had to learn about all the various mm -hmm. religions. That's where it should stay. Yeah. They shouldn't enforce it on science lessons. Yeah. I think religion and science are two very different things. They are, yeah. yeah. One can be proven and yeah. the other one can't. Now, this guy, Bobby Henderson... Mm -hmm. who was a 24-year-old physicist from the Oregon State University, he agreed. He, <laughs> he, he very much agreed that science and religion should be separate things. Yeah. So he thought about it, and rather than make massive protests or anything like that, you know, crowds of people to pr protest it or anything, which no one's going to listen to anyone mm -hmm. anyway, he thought, well... Maybe I can play them at their own game. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he wrote a letter to the Board of Education saying that his belief was that the one true God was in fact a massive dollop of spaghetti and meatballs that flies through space with two eyes that protrude on stalks from the top of its blobby, noodly body. <laughs> noodly body. <laughs> yeah. And he, he said that his beliefs were just as valid as anyone else's beliefs, no matter how ludicrous they sound, mm -hmm. just as valid. Also, just as impossible to prove as anyone else's beliefs, He's even if they believe in intelligent design. Yeah, yeah. Now, people who believe in intelligent design believe that the Earth was built around 10,000 years ago. It was met, created by God around 10,000 years ago. This is on the, on the mainstream Christian circuit, yeah, at least yeah. anyway. Um, whereas, obviously, in science, we can carbon date rocks, and that shows that the Earth is around 4.5 billion years ago. It's a big difference. Old. It's a, a slight difference. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 10,000 years, 4.5 billion years. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he proposed that the, the reason why we have this difference is because when scientists are carbon dating the rock samples and getting 4.5 billion year results, it's because the flying spaghetti monster is reaching out with his noodly appendages and altering the results in real time. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and he concluded his letter by saying, and I quote, 
I think we can all look forward to a time when these three theories are given equal time in our science classrooms across the country and eventually the world. A third of time for intelligent design, one third of time for the flying spaghetti monsterism, and one third time for logical conjecture based on overwhelming observable evidence. I like this bloke. Which is a bit of a knockout. Yeah, yeah. Letter, really, isn't it? I mean, that is playing into their own game. He's done it well. He has done it really well. They failed to reply. Hmm. They didn't reply to him. They thought, well, this guy's obviously just a lunatic and this is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was going places. <laughs> he weren't taking it lying down. He weren't taking it lying down. He put it online. I don't know wh exactly where he put it to start. We might have been Reddit or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it went viral, mate. It did. It went viral. Loads of people just picked up on it and was like, well, yeah, this guy, Like, I can see what he's trying to do here. Mm, they could see the smart kind of science behind what he was exactly, doing. Exactly, yeah. And people started following his religion <laughs> of the flying spaghetti monster. And I imagine at this point he still hasn't got the religion all planned out or anything, has he? He's Not that know. point, no. <laughs> Um, but he was gaining support, getting followers. Obviously, people don't actually believe mm. in a god of a flying spaghetti monster. Well, maybe some of them do, I don't know. Um, but it's more about just ending the double standards. Yeah, the principle of it. The principle it? of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like you say, he hadn't developed the religion particularly at that time. Mm -hmm. and through crowdfunding of uh, events and stuff like that, he actually managed to get a website up and running so, he, so people could actually join the religion. Yeah, yeah, good on him. Uh, and people did, in their droves. <laughs> thousands. Yeah, thousands of people, <laughs> but particularly Americans, obviously, that were going to be affected by this Kansas Board of Education mm. and whatnot. Um, and, and so he started developing this religion, um, by saying that uh, uh, y you can indeed get ordained for a small nominal fee just to help them maintain the website because it it's a non-profit organisation as well. Yeah. The Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is completely non-profit. They don't have any bricks and mortar buildings to go to for mass or anything like that. They do occasionally have the odd, odd gathering. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it's pretty much all online. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So he wrote The Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Fantastic. I believe it is a book that you can buy. <laughs> I mean, I'm tempted already and you're not I, even into it. I love it. I love that this whole idea. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, if you're kind of like a secular humanist or whatever, then you should really subscribe to this. It, or, mm. you know, atheists and, and all that sort of thing. I mean, this is so. This is so good. So, in the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, mm -hmm. he wants to explain some of the things. And you can you can go online to www.spaghettimonster.org and check this and more out right, for yourself. Because there's even more on there that I, I didn't have time to write everything down. Or you know, it's just a half hour podcast. Dot yeah. org is official as well. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, just, I was just thinking, is, is there a way you can have dot .church? But I don't think there would be. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he goes to goes on to kind of... And these, these are ludicrous. I'm Absolutely ready, I'm right. ready for it. So, the theory of gravity. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, scientists don't even know how gravity works. Mm -hmm. uh, but an, an object that has mass has gravity. Now, his claim is that everything in the universe is simultaneously being pushed by the invisible noodles of the flying spaghetti monster. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Thus keeping everyone on the ground. <laughs> so we're being pushed by invisible noodles. noodles. Yeah, oh no. Door's the, open. The door's open. <laughs> the door oh. wants to be part of it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so that is amazing. So already we're one for one on the uh, the beliefs of the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. Okay, I can get behind that. Right. As someone who was part atheist, part agnostic myself, 
I find this absolutely amazing. It's brilliant, isn't yeah. it? I mean, like I said, I am religious, but I don't constrain to any like organised religion mm-hmm. because I think it's, it's just big business these days, isn't it? Yeah. And one of the things that I appreciate about these is it's not for profit. Mm-hmm. You know, which which I think is very admirable. It's kind of just there to prove a point. Yeah. Now here we. This this is where it gets really great. Now, excuse me. Global warming. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pollution and stuff, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, that's what I got to. Well, the thing is, mate, th- th- this is a study of correlation and causation. Global warming is due to a lack of pirates. Oh. Oh, no, that makes more sense. And I've drawn a little graph on my notes. So oh, I'll hold it that way, so just in case the camera can see. Uh, the, the start of the graph there, pirate numbers are declining, whereas yeah. global warming, global temperature, is going up. And you can see yeah. correlation of causation. I mean, that makes sense. It does. So pirates, like me, mm-hmm. help to keep the planet cool, obviously. I mean, pirates are pretty cool. Pirates are Less pirates around these days, more temperature. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why International Talk Like a Pirate Day is in September the 19th. Oh, is that part of their religion as well? Well, it's just an explanation that that's when, in the Northern Hemisphere, everything starts cooling down. (laughs) That's clever. (laughs) So International Talk Like a Pirate Day, it must be then. Um, But that's not all. See, pirates play a very big part in pastafarianism. Mm, that's got a ring to it. I that's like that. good, isn't it? Pastafarian. Pastafarianism. Yeah. So, pirates are our ancestors. Well, they obviously are, aren't they? Everyone comes from pirates. Yeah. Well, the thing <laughs> is, Darwin's theory of re- of evolution says that we evolved from apes uh-huh. because we share ninety nine percent of our DNA with primates. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is pretty good. Yeah. Unfortunately, we share ninety nine point nine 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 percent of our DNA with pirates. So obviously, we evolved from pirates. Yeah. Were pirates not monkeys? Were they all around the world? Yeah, of course they were. Yeah, I guess they. They were all over the seven seas, weren't they? I can kind of see what he's doing here. So, am I right in thinking all the kind of legislations and things that they're trying to put into this science class and they're saying certain parts about religion, he's just combating it or rebutting it. With just absolutely ludicrous yeah. claims. Yeah, yeah to I'm with you. Sh- to, almost to sort of take the mickey out of religion because, I mean, I mean, in his eyes, perhaps, any kind of creationism or religious stories are the, the same kind of ludicrous claims, really, aren't mm-hmm. they? Yeah, yeah. Because there's no facts or evidence with half of the the stuff, which is kind of the reason why you get atheists, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I I mean, in our last podcast where we covered religion, the the Christian religion, Mm -hmm. we even said about Noah's Ark, you know, how believable is it that he actually fitted all those animals on a boat? And we still got hate for that. Yeah, we got hate for that. Well, actually, in fairness, people who listened to the podcast didn't really hate it and people who watched the full length podcast uh, yeah, yeah. didn't hate it it was our little promos our little, little snippets yeah the ones that we put on Instagram and TikTok and, and upload the YouTube shorts they were the ones that got hate yeah because people weren't actually watching the whole episode and getting our very fair yeah. assessment of religion I just feel if you're an adult and you believe in Noah's Ark, then you've got to have a long, hard look in the mirror at yourself. Personally, <laughs> that's fair like, enough. That's your, that's your belief, mate. And that, that's the thing. Why are your beliefs any less valid than I mean, yeah. 20 million Christians? You know? <laughs> There's no way 20 million people believe in Noah's Ark. I refuse to believe it, man. It's so ludicrous to me. But yeah, I, I do get what you're saying, yeah. Some people would just say, oh, you're an idiot, shut up, you don't know anything about religion, and fair enough, yeah, right, they're exactly. right. But anyway, the, like the past affairs, like I said, they do have meetings uh, occasionally, like organised meetings, because they don't have buildings to go to mass or church, you know, that sort of thing. But 
when they have meetings, they all dress up as pirates <laughs> to celebrate our origins. That's commitment. <laughs> um, I just need to mention uh, in some of the beliefs, obviously, um, in Christianity at least, there's heaven and hell, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. if, if you're good, you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But if you drink beer and or smoke weed, then you're going to hell. Mm. Uh, yeah. Spaghetti monster, they, they don't have that. They, oh. just, they just have the heaven of the spaghetti monster. And heaven has a beer volcano and a stripper factory. Oh, wow. Okay. Who don't want to get on board with that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every red-blooded male in the world is going to want to get on that. I wasn't expecting that. No, I wasn't. Um, so, but yeah. Um, what now, do they call hell? Uh, there isn't a hell. It's just, a, oh, it's just okay. spaghetti monster heaven. <laughs> it's just the afterlife, and it's got a beer volcano and a stripper factory. Well, that is a win-win. That's a win-win, yeah. Who, 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 wants, yeah. who wants anything else? <laughs> and this religion... Um, has actually gained enough mass, if you like, mm -hmm. to actually be accepted uh, as, an, official as an official religion. Right Now, there was a guy in Austria, I don't know his name, um, a guy in Austria, uh, actually, because if you ordain yourself to this religion as a minister... Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, all religion, you know, priests wear their tunics, don't they, with their vestries and, and the collar. yeah, collars, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Now, in pastafarianism, what do you think they're going to wear? Mm. A colander <laughs> yeah. on their head. Yeah. <laughs> and a guy in Austria who was ordained as a flying spaghetti mon monster minister. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> wanted... To, obviously, well, he needed to change his driving license because I guess they have to do that every 10 years like they do here, mm -hmm. or whatever. And he actually got permission to have a colander on his head in his photo for his driving license. Nice. And he managed to get that passed. He got it, got it passed, yeah. In Austria. And it's not just Austria. Uh, Czech Republic also recognises the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And a couple of states in uh, America... Utah and Massachusetts, they all recognise it as an official religion and you can wear a colander in photo ID. Good on them. And, and you can, obviously you can go to www.spaghettimonster.org and look, look at all of this, what I'm telling you now, and there's even more on there. There's an FAQ section. Question number one is, is this a joke? <laughs> yeah. And the answer is no, it's not a joke. Why is why should it be any joke? Why should it be a joke more than joining any other religion? You know, that's what mm -hmm. they're trying to point out is everybody's entitled yeah. to their own beliefs. It's and very a, clever. Another question is, how can I join? And the answer is, if you want to join, consider yourself a member. <laughs> yeah, no hidden fees. No hidden fees, no costs. They say you can try it for free for 30 days. If it's not for you, your own God will probably take you back. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Which I think is brilliant, you know? I mean, like, if, for me, myself, like I say, I have my own religious beliefs, mm -hmm. you know? But I love this! Yeah, yeah. And you're not taking offence to it. No, I'd quite happily admit to being a member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> Particularly as I don't even have to dress up to look like a pirate. Yeah, you're already there. <laughs> Some people would accuse you of being a member already. Exactly. On the inside. I, I could have started it. Yeah. <laughs> you're Bobby. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, mean no, that, that, that's it. I haven't really got any more information on the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, but I thought... I honestly r wish that I'd done this episode before I did the original religion episode. Yeah, take some heat off. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Th this is equality. It's religious equality. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's, he's clearly... Why am I right and you're wrong, you know? It's... Yeah, it's clearly to make a point and he's, he's proved it. If it's gone to other countries, <laughs> yeah, he's done well there. He really has... He, he's got me thinking about it. Like... 
not just join. Obviously, I, I wouldn't join because it is. Why it not? Is, it is. a bit too silly for me, isn't yeah. it? It is a bit too silly. But I think you're just but, being embarrassed by telling people that you're a member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Yeah, but I'd, I'd quite happily say I'm a Pastafarian. That okay, sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you were like, oh, I do believe in a flying spaghetti monster, I'd be worried about getting the, locked up. So. Yeah, but that's the thing. Obviously, the people who actually join this religion, mm. they don't actually believe in the flying spaghetti. Although they do, they kind of make believe that they do. They just, kind of play Just on for it. the absurdity of it all, you know? Yeah, yeah. They play on it for a bit of yeah. fun and reaction and things. But no, I get it. I think it's very, very smart. And I, I applaud... Clever. Bob, I think it's Bobby. That Bo- it. Bobby Henderson, I think his name yeah. was. Yeah, to be fair. Well done. I, I applaud him because he's done well. Yeah. I've said it like three times, but yeah, he has. He's, <laughs> he's done a great job it's, of that. It's, yeah, I mean... I get it. it it's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a big up yours. Uh-huh. And his main goal, he said, was to keep religion out of schools mm-hmm. and to keep money out of religion. Yeah. Because one of my the one reason why I don't subscribe to organised religion is because it's just big business these days, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, a lot of it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some religions more than others, like allegedly Scientology, <laughs> take Ooh. thousands and hundreds of thousands from yeah, people. Yeah, oh, millions of people. Yeah, and of it's, people. And I, I personally think that's that's not a religion. To no. me, that is, in my opinion... It's a cult. It's a cult. Yeah. And if you're taking money from good, hard-working people and then spouting nonsense, allegedly, but, yeah. <laughs> like I just don't think that that's morally not right. And why would you want to support a religion that just bleeds you dry but Every money? religion almost does it, you know? I mean, I, I do understand with... Some religions have really good morals. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I understand that aspect of it. You know, thou shall not steal your neighbour and yeah, steal yeah, your yeah. neighbour. <laughs> 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 um, you know what I mean. So, um, what, thou shall not commit murder and, you yeah, know, yeah. the basics of society. Everyone should be doing that anyway. Mm. But I do understand being nice to each other and being nice to your neighbour. <laughs> yeah. But... I do, I do get what you mean with the, the money side of it. and Like the, the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, you're required to donate a certain mm. amount of your salary and to time. the church. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know they help each other out. You know, mm. if a Mormon car breaks down and another Mormon's a mechanic, he would almost fix his car for nothing, you know, yeah, and yeah. that sort of thing. And I can understand that side of it. But yeah, it's community. It's just, you, you know that the people who up the top of the religion mm-hmm. you know the pope of whatever religion it is is creaming it isn't they yeah he's laughing yeah. he's laughing at him worth millions yeah I do understand the like you said about the uh, the community side of it mm-hmm. I do understand that like we'd probably do the same you know I, I, I'm i guilty of it when you know like you're, you're going out and, and stuff and just a, a little example is like someone who's covered in tattoos I might be more approachable to them and start a conversation with them and be more friendly to them Yeah. just because I've, we've got something in common. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I do understand that aspect of it. But it, there's there's so much to the background of religion and money and stuff that we yeah. don't know about. But uh, the thing about the Mormons and things is I, I don't judge. Do what you want to do. Believe in what you want to believe. Yeah, but you like you, you said at the start... Stop pushing it onto other people. Yeah. Like going round to people's houses and saying, I'm on a mission. I need this many people to join and stuff. I think that aspect is wrong. People a bit. should be free to join whatever religion mm-hmm. they feel attracted to. Yeah. Whatever they believe in. Yeah. I mean, I, I've met people, you know, white blokes like myself mm-hmm. here in the UK that have just spent time with Muslim families Mm -hmm. that have decided to actually become Muslim themselves Mm -hmm. uh, just because they've they've actually learned about it and they've enjoyed their experience and and they've wanted... They they might have been atheists before, but then they've they've decided to join that religion. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely nothing. You should be allowed to choose to join a religion if you want to. It shouldn't be forced upon you. Yeah, I actually knew a girl, um, I won't say her name, uh, but I actually knew a girl who was a Jehovah's Witness. And then when she reached the age of about 20, 21, she didn't like certain aspects of that religion, but she still believed in certain things. So she just switched to Christianity. And she's still a Christian now because... the the Christian beliefs and everything appealed to her more and possibly she could, a little bit more liberal or yeah and it was a bit more lenient and things yeah. and she couldn't wrap her head around the one thing is she couldn't wrap her head around the fact that with um, I mean I don't want to get too into it because I don't want to get it wrong because right, I don't yeah, know yeah. exactly what Jehovah's Witnesses believe but I there's something to do with like blood transfusions isn't there yeah they don't they, they don't they don't have blood transfusions yeah same as uh, Jewish people I think don't won't accept blood transfusions oh I didn't know as about well. yeah. that but she with the Jehovah's Witnesses she yeah she didn't believe in that and <laughs> she thought that was really wrong that they could watch children die because of their religion. That's what she yeah, was against. Because they won't accept blood from a different yeah. source. Yeah. So then she was like, no, I'm not having this. And she switched over to Christianity. And now she's happier. She's married. She's got kids of her own. And yeah, yeah. she's that's living a enough. happy life. More, like, more power to her. Yeah. You know, that's what I say. Believe in what you want to believe in, but it's got to be your choice. Mm-hmm. So, on the paranormality scale... <laughs> yeah. It's kind How of the diff- hell are we going to rate It's kind of a shot? difficult one, isn't it? Because obviously, it's not paranormal... <laughs> and it's not even believable. No, it's not. But the uh, it's the kind of the idea behind yeah, it. It's it's very smart. Its intentions are very honourable, and I, I I really like it. I like the feel of it, and I, and I know that they're ludicrous claims, mm-hmm. but they're ludicrous claims for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So and honestly, I I actually want to rate this quite high. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Because like I, I like you said, I'd quite happily call myself a pastafarian. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone asked me what's your religion, oh, pastafarian, mate. Uh-huh. Not a problem. I wouldn't have wouldn't think twice about it. Uh, although I'm not a pastafarian, but you know, I'd quite happily subscribe to this. This is the only yeah. organised religion that I would subscribe to. So you know for, what I mean? for one time and one time only, the paranormality scale is how much we like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, that, if that's the case, mate, nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to give it a, an 8.5. All right. <laughs> yeah. um, because of obviously, yeah... It's not believable. <laughs> well, it, it, it kind of is believable. The, the the theory of it is believable, or the reasoning of it is believable. But the actual flying spaghetti monster, yeah. you know, a giant dollop of spaghetti on meatballs with eyes. Mate, who are we to say that he's wrong? That affects the world with his noodly appendages. I love yeah. that. <laughs> you had me at invisible noodle arms, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, I'll meet you there. I'll go 8.5 as well. Yeah? Yeah, I'll meet oh, you there. Well, an average of 8.5 then. So that's, yeah. That is brilliant. For, so pastafarianism, 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the other episode was, but if that's higher than the Christian episode. Uh, no, I think Christian was about 9. I okay. Think. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> we don't want more hate mail. No, <laughs> no. But I'm, I absolutely love just the, the whole story behind this, the reason why it's come to being and the way that it actually took off <laughs> and its ideals and everything, I think, are brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, go out there and read some stuff. And that when, I, when I first told you that I was doing the Flying Spaghetti Monster, you were like, how are you even going to make a story out of that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's that? What else is there to know apart from Flying Spaghetti Monster? But... There's science behind yeah. it. There's there's some genius brains ticking there is. behind that. So now I respect it. I, just like I want to say I respect all religion, just because I don't believe in it and I'm not religious, doesn't well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean no. anything. No one's listening to this podcast going, oh, I can't believe Josh isn't religious. Like, who cares? No, it doesn't matter. Believe what you want to believe and don't judge other people. Exactly. You do you. That, yeah. is, that is almost a mantra for... Flying spaghetti monster, you know. You do you. Yeah, you do you. And if you believe in Noah's Ark, power to you. <laughs> you <Yeah. know>? that's, <laughs> that's your choice. If you want to be a giant adult idiot that believes in Noah's Ark, <laughs> that's completely up to you. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying. 
I, I know believe, you don't believe it. So. I believe that if you believe in Noah's Ark, you're an idiot. That simple. Like, that's that's my one belief. I'm going to start the Church of Josh. And number one rule <laughs> is Noah's Ark is a pile of poo. Poo. <laughs> PG. <laughs> Well, good luck with that one, mate. Yeah. <laughs> the Church of Josh. Will it catch on? No. So if you want to join the Church of Josh, <laughs> write <laughs> paranormality.uk at gmail.com. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> it is right, but you should probably say churchofjosh.com or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But never mind. Yeah. No, like, if you've enjoyed this episode, if you are a pastafarian, let us know. If, you, if we've swayed your decision to become a pastafarian, let us know. Send us an email. Um, obviously, like and subscribe, as always. You can or, uh, write us a comment on YouTube or Instagram or uh, TikTok, I believe. Um, or you can write into the email. Uh, I was considering uh, creating a Twitter account, but I know Ooh. absolutely nothing about Twitter. I've never been on it. I was on Twitter for about six weeks, and it was so toxic and negative, I deleted it. So we're not going to do Twitter, so <laughs> Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, or our email. If you want to put your point across and argue that pastafarianism is stupid... We're probably not going to listen to you, but hey, <laughs> everybody's got their own opinion and it's just as valid as anybody else's. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. Until then, I've been Pirate. I'm Josh. And this has been Paranormality UK. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.